Welcome to the Hair of the Dog podcast. Today, I am talking with pet photographer Marika Moffitt all about her incredible rebrand. We're going deep in this one about finding your business and life's purpose, how to know when it's time to change your business and really embrace that, and what to do about branding when you're just starting out. So no matter where you are in your journey, you're going to want to tune in to this week's episode. So stay tuned. Welcome to the Hair of the Dog podcast. If you're a pet photographer ready to make more money and start living a life by your design, you've come to the right place. And now, your host, pet photographer, travel addict, chocolate martini connoisseur, Nicole Begley. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Hair of the Dog podcast. I'm your host, Nicole Begley. And today, we have back for her fourth appearance. But it's been quite some time. Miss Marika Moffitt from the artist previously known as Dirty Dog Photography and now known as Soul Dog Collective. <laughs> C- creative. <gasps> creative. Creative. Yes. Oh my gosh. Marika, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you. I love it. Yeah, you're going to have to be the, the artist formerly known as Dirty Dog Photography. <laughs> That's awesome. I might have to have a t-shirt made. <laughs> yes, exactly. It was some crazy looking... Uh, like graphic that we don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I love it. I love it. Oh my gosh. Marika, I'm so excited to chat with you today because as we just alluded to, you just went through a pretty big rebrand with your business. So first of all, how long were you dirty dog photography? When did you start your business? And you're based out in the Pacific Northwest, Seattle mm-hmm. area. Actually, real quick for those of you guys that are just tuning in, if you haven't heard Marika on the podcast before, It's been a hot minute since she was on, but she was on episode number eight, 33, and 40. And there's lots of good stuff there, so go check those out. (laughs) But anyway, yeah, tell us a little bit about when you started, why you started, and how long you've been in this pet photography crazy world. Sure. Uh, So I actually officially started Dirty Dog Photography in 2011, kind of as an offshoot of my people photography that I was doing, which was Dirty Bird Photography. And I had, you know, my dogs were, and all the animals in my life were the reason why I got into photography as a kid. But for some reason, you know, I kind of went away from that when I went to photography school. I didn't really see it as what I could do professionally. Well, yeah. Back at that time, though, there was like three pet photographers. Mm -hmm. So it was not really seen as a viable option. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I was doing my photography part-time for the longest time because I, so I finished photography school in 2011 and everything in my school was very much about the craft of photography. There was very little business at all being taught. And we just didn't have what you've created for pet photographers, the education to actually run a business and be profitable. We didn't have any of that. So I had to just, you know, I just worked a regular job several different regular jobs over the years and did my, my passion on the side. And I knew like I had a, a, another photographer friend who was telling me since like 2010, Marika, you need to focus on dogs. You know, you love it. You need to do it. So I started dirty dog photography so that I could just start playing around with that. And I was living up um, in Anacortes at the time, which is about an hour and a half North of Seattle, where I live now which is a very small area. So I didn't, you know, I, again, just doing it super part-time. Um, and then in 2014, my uh, now husband and I decided we were going to move to Seattle to like, let's go after our dreams. If there's any time, let's do it now. He's a musician. I wanted yeah. to do my dog photography. And so we moved here and it's really expensive. So we had to get regular <laughs> jobs. <laughs> and um, So When we first moved here, I cleaned houses. I worked for a house cleaning company and did and built and was working on dirty dog photography on the side, but it's a whole new market, all of these different things. And cleaning houses is really a hard job. So I didn't have a lot of energy to fully put my heart into building my business. So I just sort of didn't do that. And it it made me really unhappy. Um, Yeah. And then eventually got to a point in 2016, after we got married that, um, I realized, well, we actually went on this 14 day honeymoon road trip through like national parks and state parks and Utah and all of these beautiful things. And I, during that time, I realized, what am I doing with my life? This is what it's all about. Like freedom, 
how do I, how do I get this all the time? And I was like, the only way to do that for me is to be my own boss. Yes. And so, <laughs> yeah. And so six months later I left the, I no longer worked for the company. Cause I was like, I'm, I'm not going to work for anybody else. And I, yep. uh, my husband and I decided that it was time for me to launch full time and focus on dirty dog photography. And I did actually clean some houses on the side for myself. I opened my own business. Yeah. Um, and just continued to clean houses for a few people just to to float through that building right. time. And I'm, and, and I'm so glad that I did that because it was e- at that point, it was easy work because I had been doing it for several years. And, and I knew the houses that I was cleaning. I didn't have to market and try to get more clients. I was good. So I got right. to really focus on building my, my brand. And I got to actually think about, okay, if, what do I really want this to be? What this is going to be the thing that I do that gets me to where I want to go. What do I want that to look like? And so I just started doing that and it was amazing. I mean, that was 2017. That is when I, when I went full time. Yeah. Um, Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of people get up in their head of like, you know, I'm working this full-time job and it has to be an all or nothing, like total switch. Mm -hmm. And I think that can, put a big roadblock in the way of, you know, pursuing these dreams and and going after, you know, opening your business. But Mm -hmm. you don't have to do it that way. Like you didn't do it that way. And I didn't either. When I left the aviary, I ended up working part time for them. And then I also had once I was not doing part time for them anymore, I was doing like, some part time photography um, like newborn and hospitals thing. So not my jam at all of like mm-hmm. what I do, but it was like, Oh, it's photography. It's was like just a couple hours, quick, decent money. It was like, great. All right. Super. So I think there's a lot of really out of the box ways that you can create some other income in your life that is still flexible. You know, your rule was you're not going to work for anybody else, but your mm-hmm. rule wasn't, I'm not going to do anything other than photography. You're like, Oh, right. no, I'll still clean some houses, but for mm-hmm. me, <laughs> Yeah. So I make yeah. all the rules. So yeah, so I think people just need to be open to, you know, how instead of asking or saying like, oh, I can't do this, but just asking, all right, how can I make this happen? What do I need to put into place to make this happen? Yeah. And I think the other really important reason to that you don't have to replace an entire income with, when you're building your your photography business to give yourself that grace period is that then you're not acting from a, a space of desperation and taking just about right. any client that comes through to you. Like that was the other thing for me is I knew that I wanted to build something that was amazing and, right. and in alignment <laughs> with what I, with the type of work I wanted to do, the type of people I wanted to work with. And I tried a bunch of different things out. And, and as we go through this and talk about the actual rebrand, like I'm at a point now where I'm not doing any of those things anymore because they don't fit, but you have to try out those things, but you need to be able to do it in a way that it's not coming from desperation. It's coming from Mm -hmm. exploration and so that you can go after the clients um, or receive the clients that are most in alignment with the life that you want, not just the the money you want to make, but the life you want to make. Because I know for me, like there are certain types of people like mean people. I don't want to work mean, <laughs> mean people. I don't. And so I'm not desperate. I'm not coming from a place of desperation where I will take the mean dollars. No, I'm not taking the yeah. mean dollars. Right, right. Yeah, no, that is huge to be able to determine what it is, like who your actual ideal client is and to be able to attract that person and have the ability to kind of pick and choose who you're working with. Mm -hmm. Um, I think a lot of people end up getting in that. I mean, I've been guilty of it now and again. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, oh, all right. Yeah, I can squeeze in another client. Oh, okay. Yeah. And taking clients, saying yes to clients that you can tell weren't always the absolute right fit that usually then... (laughs) ended up not being the right fit. And in mm-hmm. the end, you're just like, why, why did I, why did I do this? I'm not serving anybody I'm not serving them as well as they can be served, I'm not serving myself. Mm-hmm. So getting really clear on that is yeah. so and important. I think, I think the first step of any of that is getting really clear on yourself and mm-hmm. being super connected to who you are and what you want in your life. Because there are some people if you are building businesses where their connection to their clients isn't as important to them because they mm-hmm. truly their joy comes from the actual work that they're doing. And so if they're working with someone who isn't someone they would want to call their friend, that doesn't matter as much because 
the where the way they've structured their business, they're not necessarily having a lot of face time mm-hmm. or with them. So they don't have to take on any of the the emotions of that person. That's not the right. business that I I have built. My mine is very emotional. So I do have to protect myself. But I right. I think that there's room for uh, for all of it. It's just that's why it's so important to understand yourself and what you want and what you have capacity for. And if if that means you want to have be shooting as much as possible and you don't, it doesn't matter to you as much that if someone fits completely the type of person, that's okay. It's more than Mm -hmm. being really clear on what you want. Yeah. Yeah. Being really clear on that. And then also being really clear on what you want to create. Cause so many pet photographers, like they're like, what should I offer? You know, what products? And they're so worried about choosing the right products, but Oh my gosh. I mean, all of our businesses can be so different in how it's structured, how it's priced, the products we offer. Mm-hmm. And all of that needs to come from a place of of you loving it because that's going to show with your connection with your clients and you're going to attract the people that also love what you love. Mm-hmm. <laughs> For instance, you know, here in Charlotte, Kim Hollis, who's a friend of mine, another local pet photographer, we offer very different products, but we have the same target market and yet we both have clients. So <laughs> mm-hmm. there's, there's no right or wrong. <laughs> no, no. I, one of my favorite things in coaching is talking about pricing and building that, not just the numbers, but the actual experience of what you're offering your clients. Uh, because the way that I personally look at it is, yeah, fine. What do you love? Like what mm-hmm. I, I, I built all of my pricing around one particular product that I want my clients to get because I want them to have the experience that it provides, which is the Mm -hmm. book. I want them to have this beautiful experience is kind of the overarching theme of what I do in my work is connection. And I want to provide my clients with more opportunities to continue to connect with other people and with themselves long after their dogs are gone. And for Mm -hmm. me, the best way for them to do that is to have a book that they can physically hold in their hands and sit down with other people and share the photos and, t- and tell stories. That's what I want my clients to do. So I built all of my pricing around the fact that I want my clients to get that book. Right, so right. It's, it works. It absolutely works. And I never really worry about, oh, am I offering enough? No, my clients trust me and they, they are like, okay, well, what should I do? Well, here's what most people do. And mm-hmm. the secret is because I, I, t- the, I talk about it all the time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I talk, right, they, exactly. Everybody wants it because I talk about it and I tell them this is this is the best way right here. Uh-huh. The best way. Yeah. Yeah. Because most people have not done this before. They have no idea. So they're looking to mm-hmm. us for our professional input. Yeah. And, you know, and to be able to tell them why that book is so special or why that wall piece is so special. You know, that's that's the why we're always talking about. I think people get up in their own head of like, oh, my God, I have to define my why. Ah, I don't know. I like dogs and photography. But but there is more of a why there. Like for me, I'm not so much the albums, but that signature wall piece, like a big, bold, gorgeous signature wall piece. And I sell one to pretty much every client Mm -hmm. because that's all I talk about. (laughs) It's it's just that's what we do. So um, because I want to to decorate their space with something that's meaningful and beautiful that they'll see every day. So. Yeah. I love that. There's no right or wrong, guys. <laughs> Mm-mm. Just be clear for yourself what you love. And that's the thing mm-hmm. is when you're clear on that and you can talk about it with passion and passion comes out in, in many different ways. There's no right or wrong way to be passionate, but the only way for it to truly come out is if it's authentic to you. If you really, truly are connected to what you're sharing with your clients, then they will feel it. Mm-hmm. And so that's, I guess that's the 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 challenge for people is just look at yourself and, and learn about who you are. Yeah. I'm wondering if there's anyone out there that's like, well, how do I know if it's authentic? I think I like it. <laughs> oh yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> I think we all have that about things. It's it, yeah. especially in the beginning when you're overwhelmed with all of the options. For me, it really comes down to personal experience and looking back at my life as a whole and what were the things that lit me up as a kid that made me excited. Why did I love um, mm-hmm. the animals in my life? What, what, you know, drew me to wanting to take photos of them and then just sort of taking the time to think about what would it mean to me personally to have, I mean, I'm now in this where I lost my dog last year 
and right. and you you are in the same mm-hmm. boat, right? So now what we get, we're on the other side of it where we are actually experiencing what the photos of them bring to us now. And for me, that's also really why my rebrand has happened because I have been thinking about that nonstop. Mm -hmm. Like, here's where my life is. I'm on the other side. How can I be a better guide for my clients in sharing my experiences? And, and, and I've been through this journey many times with the dogs and cats and horses in my life, having loved and lost them. And so that's kind of what I built my business on was the idea that, you know, I could guide my clients through that time, whether they're at that time or not. Cause the thing is it's inevitable. It will happen. We will have to say goodbye to them in this earthly life, but their, their stories don't have to end. So here's how we can help them live on through us is through the photos, through the stories, um, through the conversations that we have with other people about our experiences. And I think that it does start with us as photographers. The first step is to go there, to go there for ourselves so that we can better serve the people that we're asking to, to stand in front of our, our cameras. Yeah, for sure. And sharing that that story and not being afraid to, you know, let people know about your experiences. I think a lot of times people are worried about, oh, I don't want to say anything about, you know, the the fact is that our time with these animals are short. So they don't want to like feel like they're jumping on this like slimy marketing thing by like bringing attention to that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not, it's not like that. It doesn't have to be like that. No, it doesn't. And that's the thing is that's why for it to be truly from the heart, you have to go to the heart and you have Mm -hmm. to know your, how you feel about it. And it's okay if, if, if you can't get away from that feeling of it being slimy, then that's okay. It's just not meant for you to go there right now. Mm -hmm. Um, Right. And like I said, like I am, my brand is completely emotional and vulnerable. And, and like, I go there all the time because that's how I exist in the world. That's like my, my own personal soul journey is to un, uh, uncover and discover all of the like deep emotional things that are possible in this lifetime. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause that just makes me, it makes me feel more human more, and more connected. Um, and that's what, that's what my rebrand is about is I just want to have these beautiful conversations with, with clients. I just had Wednesday, I had a, a consultation and a sales session that both were so moving and just listening to my clients speak about their, their connections with their dogs and their lives. And one of them is, it was a consultation and she booked and we're going to have a session and, um, in May and the other is her dog passed two and a half weeks ago. And Mm. so it was just a very emotional, many tears were shed from both of us talking and it was all over zoom, but having, being able to hold that space is really important to me. And as a, as a person, I can't do that with, you know, 10 clients a month or or 10 a week. Like, yeah, yeah. And so (laughs) I've, that's why I've purposefully built what I've built because I want, that's what I want in my life. I want to have those deep, beautiful connections with people. I want to be able to give them this space to feel safe and share those things so that they can go out into the world and understand that they can do the, that's, that it's okay. That what they feel about the dogs in their life or the cat or the horse, Mm -hmm. um, is, is worthy of being shared and seen. So I love it. I love it. So as, as I'm sitting here, like crying myself, yeah, I know. <laughs> I figured we would have some tears today. She's oh, so man. Anyway. Um, so what, what was your, um, you know, as you went through, cause this has been a journey, long time coming of yeah. figuring out like, this is what I want my business to really mm-hmm. involve. So what was the the decision process when you were coming along and you're like, oh my gosh, I need to totally change my name, rebrand. Yeah. This is more than just a changing my positioning and changing my messaging. This is yeah. like a full on new whole picture. Yeah. I think it. what's interesting is thinking back to like when I decided on dirty dog photography. I mean, it was just like an offshoot of dirty bird right. photography. And, and I know like, it's funny, like I love watching, uh, when people are starting their businesses, I love watching them do the, what should my name be game? 
because right. it's it's hard to know. It really is. There's should I use my actual human person name or right. should I create a name that is cute or is whatever? And it's hard to know because you don't know where you're going to be in five years, right? Mm-hmm. Um, right. Or for me, however many years it's been. Um, <laughs> just a few. Uh, yeah, just a few. But it kind of over the past couple of years, I definitely was feeling the push that, okay, I'm going somewhere. This is shifting. Something different is happening. And then last year was such a dumpster fire within a dumpster fire of a year, having lost a family member to suicide and a grandmother to cancer, and then my soul dog uh, to old age. She was ready to go. Um, yeah. But it still doesn't make just, it any easier. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It's just absolutely devastating. Um, and I would say probably in between the point of when my nephew passed and Kerouac passed is when I really started personally f- feeling a lot of different things. Just my whole entire world was completely shaken up because it's just an experience that you can't prepare for. Um, right. Right. You can't, you just can't it's and grief does not grief comes for all of us and it comes in different ways. And I took a lot of time off from my business because I had to, I had to, for, I had to be there for my family. Um, and then during that time, Kerouac, my dog was, she couldn't be home alone. She couldn't be left alone because she would get stuck in places. Yeah. She, you know, Aww. she was just at that point. And my husband and I knew, we just knew, after my nephew passed, we just, we kind of, that was like a, a big reality check for us or like Kerouac's going to go this year. We just already know this year is not going to be great. And so we just prepared ourselves for that. And I just decided I'm going to give her as much of me as I can. And so I took time off a very limited schedule for client work. Um, and in that time, I really got to like discover our con- our relationship that we had for our, our t- the entire time that Kerouac was in my life. Cause I, I got her as a puppy. So right. she would have been 16 this past December. So that's oh a long goodness. time. Yeah. yeah. I was 22 when she came into my life. So that's like some pretty important years of my life, like discovering who I was as a, as a person. And in the, the last two weeks that we had together, was really the huge turning point for me and seeing what was possible in in my business for and what I could do in my community. I shared very publicly what Kerouac and I were going through. I made a lot of Instagram posts and reels and things and I just let myself create because my my greatest form of healing is creation. Um, yeah. is art, is uh really letting uh letting all of that come through in in different interesting ways. And I had a lot of people reach out to me during that time to thank me for sharing so openly because they, as hard as it could be to watch that, that anguish, it was um, healing for them, whether they had experienced something similar years ago, recently, or knew that it was coming up sometime in the, in the near future. Mm -hmm. It was just kind of like being a, being, letting people know, here's what I'm going through it's okay. Like we go through this together and, and it just, there's just something that happens collectively when you share your, your emotion, share your grief. Mm -hmm. And I knew during all of that, that there's something bigger that I could be doing to help people. And I, I wasn't ready right away because it's just right after she was gone. I was like, I'm a mess. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what I, I can't do anything. Forget yeah. it. We're done with yeah. all of this. <laughs> burn uh, it down. Yeah. yeah. Burn it down. Yes. Um, and, but that's when it really started hitting me that, okay, I think next year the rebrand is going to happen. I'm not completely sure exactly what that looks like yet. Um, and then I, I also had decided that I was like, I'm not going to just sit around here in Seattle. Yeah. I'm going to go places. And so I started booking Airbnbs <laughs> <laughs> to be like, let's just go. What, let's do stuff. That's how I manage my problems too. I'm just like, oh, okay, yeah. fine. I'll just book an airline ticket. <laughs> yeah. Well, and like having had my dogs for the past, you know, like 15 and a half years, that wasn't easy to ever go on trips because, you know, we would always have someone watch the house with the dogs because I was like, I'm not going to put them in a, yeah, yeah, Yeah. I don't know. Can't Um, go in the kennel. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so I felt like, okay, I need to embrace this, this freedom and this grief and go find my healing. Yeah. Um, and so I started doing that and I've been to a lot of like, and not, not necessarily big giant trips, just like, you know, a few nights here and there. Right. Um, and so in, um, well, a couple of different things happened in December. Okay. So here's where I'll, I'll tell you about my, my fun thing that I do. <laughs> So a really big part of my creation process and just my, like, here's how I survive being a human (laughs) process is this thing that I call inner Googling. And it involves me asking a general question of myself or out to the universe. And then I use my tarot cards to help me uh, find the answers. And it's not fortune telling the the cards are not telling me the answers. It's triggering a, an inner knowing that's already mm-hmm. here within me. Um, yep. it's inner Googling. I'm just Googling myself. I love and, it. Yeah. <laughs> that's and I, a this, term. <laughs> I, know. I said it to my sister not too long ago and she like started crying, <laughs> laughing. She was like, you are so weird, but it's so real. Like she does it too. Um, but it could uh, be like for journaling too, with different journaling props. It's just it's like exactly. oh, it's my inner yeah. Google. <laughs> it's exactly what it is. And I do, yeah. it's a combination of that. And then I journal about what yeah. comes up. Um, and so in December I was thinking, I was kind of in a space of like, okay, I'm ready to start thinking about what's next. And I, one of the questions that I ask is what does the world need from me now? Or what is what's needed from me? And I do this Mm -hmm. to help guide me in like a lot of my social media content too, because Mm -hmm. I really, it's important to me to have purpose behind what I'm posting. Um, Mm -hmm. And so sometimes I'll be like, really, like I got really burnt out last year. I, over the last few years, I got burnt out on a lot of the dif- different things. And so I would right. find myself not able to post to social media because I was like, I just don't have anything to say, which is, can be, pro- you know, problematic because you need to be showing up regularly, but you also need to listen to yourself. If you're burnt out, right. let yourself burn for a little bit. <laughs> right, um, right. Take yeah, a little break. Yourself, yeah. <laughs> um, and so this one morning I woke up and I asked, I did, I asked the question, what does the world need from me? And what the cards told me was what, and what came up was that something different, something new, they need something different. And immediately, as soon as I like went there, I, I like created the soul dog journey project, which is a yeah. 52 prompts for people to, uh, their photo or video and story prompts. For people to capture their soul dog journey, their journey with their soul dog. And I I created it partly as an answer to being, to not being able to actually serve as a photographer, everyone in my market, because Mm -hmm. not everyone can, um, has the budget to work with me, but Mm -hmm. I still want them to be a part of my community. So this was me creating that for them. And then also I created it because I, as a way for other photographers to be able to go there, to be able to Mm -hmm. take the steps to really deeply connect with their own stories. And I think I, I created all of it in a, in like two days, the whole entire course, because (laughs) it was just, it was the right timing. Right. And it was just like the the divine download. I get that too. Or it's just like, Oh, this is not even coming from me anymore. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. And that's actually when I, that's when I realized that like, I am absolutely a conduit for, Mm -hmm. for ideas for the universe. And that I have to actually, like, I have to be in the right headspace to really, truly receive it and make it happen. Um, Yeah. And so I, I created that and that was like the next step toward, okay, this is, this feels right that we're, we're headed in the right direction. And then in January, my husband and I went and stayed in a cabin on the river for a couple nights for my birthday. And that's when I was really like kind of thinking so much about, okay, I want to rebrand and I, I want like full rebrand, new name, mm-hmm. a bunch of new things, all the things. And we actually went for a hike out in the forest that last was much longer than we were even expecting, <laughs> but it was totally worth it. It was like a misty, foggy day and there were like multiple waterfalls. It was amazing. Very sweaty too. So, um, <laughs> and it was out there just listening to nature that I, I was like, okay, I'm doing it. It's going to be soul dog creative. And, and my husband was totally with it. He was like, yeah, that makes, I get it. That makes sense. And then I was like, and it's going to cost money. (laughs) (laughs) And let's be clear. It's not going to be cheap. (laughs) No, no. (laughs) I love it. I love it. Yeah. You know, your value and you know, your worth. And then it's excellent. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's and it was the kind of thing too that well, and it was terrifying. That's how I also knew that I needed right. to do it. Because it's terrifying. Because mm-hmm. you you could look at my business from from the outside and and be like, there's nothing wrong with it. Why are you doing this? Like right. you are like you're you get a lot of inquiries every week through Google and like people are booking and they're paying your prices, all of these things. What the hell, Marco, why are you doing this? And like, well, that's exactly why. Cause I'm at a spot that it's like, okay, we're yeah. good. I built what I needed to, but where I'm dirty dog photography no longer fits where I'm going. Right. And, um, and I need to move into that new space. And also I, sure. I get a, a ton of inquiries. A lot of them are not the right fit. So right. there's something out there that's not fitting, not doing it, the right messaging. Mm-hmm. And so it's time to move into a new space for that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So <laughs> did you, when it was time to do that, did you have a designer in mind or did you have like mm-hmm. a whole big wide world of designers to search for? No. So when I was in um, my BNI chapter, our the okay, yeah. gra- graphic designer, um, his company, had, like from the beginning when I first saw his first eight minute presentation, I was like, Oh good golly. I hope I get to work with them one day. (laughs) Like it just, I love everything that they stand for. And so I reached out to him and, and I was like, okay, I'm doing the thing. It's time. This is I'm five years into going full time. And he had always said, he's like, there are milestones are a great time to do something new. And I was like, but it's more than a milestone. And all these things. And so we started the process and it's been, we're still in it. It's not finished. Um, right. It's been great. I just had a meeting with them yesterday to see a bunch of, of things. And I think it's the final revisions. And then they start working on a few other elements. Um, oh, that's visual so stuff. exciting. Yeah. I can't yeah. wait to see it. I know. And then <laughs> I, and I also hired Alex Vita to do my yeah. website. Nice. So, nice. Yeah. Awesome. So come June, I will officially be uh, Soul Dog Creative. Awesome. Do you have Do you have a like an actual launch date set? No, not yet. I will as soon as I have like my assets. I think I'll yep. probably the launch date. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And then, have you given any thought? Totally putting you on the spot to how you're going to celebrate the new the new milestone and announce it to your community. Um, I am planning, I'm working with my Instagram strategist to sort of do like a, a fun lead up. I'm kind of wanting to do like the week before, like maybe some giveaway things, like get some merch made and do some fun little giveaways and things like that. Um, oh, fun. I have, I have shirts that say my dog is my soulmate. Um, <laughs> oh, how that's so cute. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So I want to do that kind of stuff. It's really been, I've sort of felt like I've been in limbo for the past few months and it's been really right. hard to create content because I'm like, am I dirty dog or am I so right, dog? What's right, happening? Right. So it's yeah. been, it's been interesting, but, um, my strategist said the other day, she, like a couple weeks ago at our meeting, she was like, Marka, just do it messy. Your yeah. your community wants to be a part of what you're building. So don't worry about everything being like perfect. Just right. do it messy and it'll be fine. I'm like, okay, I can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Funny, um, small world situation. Rachel, your Instagram mm-hmm. strategist was on the podcast last week. I just interviewed <gasps> her yesterday. So you guys listening to this, go back to the last episode if you haven't heard. And um, yeah, I have a great conversation with Rachel. Uh, she was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> She's amazing. She, we started working together in January of 2020. Yeah. And no, 2021, January of 2021. And, uh, she, like with everything that happened last year in my life, it was so amazing to have somebody who could keep me on track with things, but still be very gentle in, mm-hmm. in understanding where I was at, uh, with all of the tragedy happening in my in my family's life right she was but and I tell I just told her yesterday we had our meeting I was like I don't know I I couldn't have done all of this without you like it really helped so much yeah yeah it's fantastic oh I love it I love it I love it I love it so yeah let's talk about real quick too I just want to talk about the branding well actually your first your dirty dog branding was that something that you kind of created on your own or did you hire a graphic designer way back uh, in the day I did it all myself I yeah. uh, just recently <laughs> I went back and looked at like all the the iterations of logos that I created and most of them were all like font based but like with yeah. some one weird little thing but the final version that I've used for the past like I think probably since 
maybe 2018, maybe 2017. I can't remember. Maybe it was before that. Who knows? So many years. Um, Was I actually had shot a silhouette in studio of my dog Cohen. And I incorporated that silhouette into the D of dirty dog. Uh Um, And so it was just dirty dog. And then it said photography underneath. Like it was really not not professional but it worked yep. like even yeah. josh who's the owner so the company i work with for soul dog is chalkbox creative and uh-huh. the owner josh he had he's told me multiple times he's like no it's great like he, and i believe him he wouldn't lie to me yeah 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 <laughs> no that, that, it is true though like when you're starting out i think a lot of people trying to put their business together and they're like oh my gosh i have to go out and hire this whole big branding team yep. but you don't even know who you are as yeah. an artist yet. You don't know mm-hmm. what your business is going to be yet. You, you just, you don't know to, so to like graphic designers are a hundred percent worth every penny. And there are some incredible graphic designers out there. And I highly recommend working with one. However, I think it's totally okay at the beginning to jump on creative market, grab yourself a font based logo, mm-hmm. pick out some colors, pick out a couple little brand enhancements, call it a day. Yeah. Until you give yourself, you know, at least two years to start to figure out, okay, is my style light and bright? Is it moody? Is it like true to life? Is you know, what, what is your style? Who mm-hmm. do you like to work with? What kind of artwork do you like to create product wise? What's this experience about? What is that? Why? Like, why are you showing up and doing this? And then you can take all of those things to a professional and you actually have some income coming in too. So it's a lot easier to pay the said mm-hmm. professional. And then they can create something just pure magic. Yeah. Uh, I redid my brand. It was 2016? 2016, I think. So I'd been in business for about five years when I, and on a self-made logo, <laughs> it was actually my signature that we Ooh. turned into the script part and then nice. just added a sans serif font at the bottom for photography. But yeah, I mean, it was worth every penny. And I still love everything about the brand <laughs> which is good yeah. yeah i i think it's uh so i'm so glad that you talked about how this isn't something you have to do right off of the bat so mm-hmm. here i'm gonna obviously podcasters cannot see this is my creative brief that was created based on interview with that they did with me to yeah to create the the guidelines for how what they're creating mm-hmm. um and I actually, uh, some of this is stuff that I actually sent after the fact too, because I was like, ooh, a bunch of more things came up and here's kind right. of, and there's no way to really know these things until you have gone there for yourself. Mm-hmm. So exactly what you're saying is getting some experience under under your belt for what kind of work you're creating, who you're creating for, what's the bigger purpose of what you're doing is really important to know because your brand is built around that. And Mm -hmm. if, and it's okay if, and also we know this, your brand is not just your logo. Um, it is all of the things it's the, the Mm -hmm. heart and soul of your business. And so you have to really, you have, that has to develop. And so, you know, I'm here. It it was the right time for me to do this. And it was scary. It was absolutely scary for me to spend this amount of money. But when I think about all the work that I put in, like for my website, the fir- my first few websites, I don't want to do any of that again. And I'm, <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm happy to pay what, I mean, what it's costing me for the website is what one client could cost. Um, right, right. Like, and, I'm, and uh, yeah. Your time is much better served going to get one more client than it is spending the many hours, blood, sweat, and tears, like many tears doing months. the website. The six months that it would take me probably. I, oh my yeah, gosh. Just and the amount my... of procrastination. I, I'm with mm-hmm. you. I'm, that's what I said. I'm like, I will never design a website or a web page again. Like, it's just mm-hmm. not my zone of genius. Yeah. So, you know, there is a time when we're building our business where you have more time than money. Mm-hmm. And so you're going to like, and, and maybe a little bit of stubbornness because you're like, damn it, I'm going to figure this out. <laughs> yeah. I think it's also important to know to like yeah. to understand how the things work so that uh when you are actually hiring someone you can properly um communicate to them what you're mm-hmm. looking for yeah. um but uh you don't have to do it all yourself if mm-hmm. you're in the position to be able yeah. to work with somebody yeah That's and i big, think it's yes yeah, yeah, I go think, ahead I, I think that a lot of i know i suffer from this but i think a lot of creative folks do where wanting to have control over all wanting to create it all 
mm-hmm. because it's like, mm-hmm. oh, I want to be the one who did it. Like I want it to, I want to be in charge of all of it. Like right, I'm the boss. Right. I want to do yeah. it all. But then it's like, but do I really? Yeah. yeah. And, and um, uh, do they know more than I do? Like, I think I know what I want, but you know, they're mm-hmm. the professionals. It's the same thing. Someone coming to us that appreciates photography and they're like, oh, I love these, but oh, I didn't even know that we could do that. You know, so. Mm-hmm. Gosh, so much of the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm just thinking back to all the, oh, I know what I was going to say. I think it is important though, when you are doing your website, like if you're going to hire somebody else out that you still are, because I think a lot of people fall into this trap of, I don't want to do this in my business here. Let me throw some money at it so I don't have to deal with it. But right. that's the wrong way to approach it. Right. Um, I think you do still need to have a basic grasp of it because... Mm-hmm. You know, I've occasionally worked with some people that that hired someone to do something like their website, and they don't even know really how to go in and make simple changes. Mm-hmm. And that puts you in such a stressful place. Then you're like, mm-hmm. oh, I need to update something. Now I need to get in touch. I need to wait for somebody else. I have to pay this other person where it really could take you five minutes to log in and make a quick change yourself. Okay. So hire That's- someone to assist, but but be familiar with the basics. Yeah. That was one of my, my biggest things in, in hiring someone to do this new website was that it needs to be on the platform that I'm currently using. Mm -hmm. And that, so that I can go in and make the changes when needed. Cause I like to change copy sometimes, or I like to change out an image. Mm -hmm. Um, or I'm, uh, a real big fan of making landing pages for things. Uh, so <laughs> right. I was like, I gotta try to not do too much of that, but I, it's the thing. It's like, I need to, if I need to make a change, I need to make a change. I need to be able to do it. So I think that is really important if to, to understand the, how things work so that you can know, Oh, I need control over this particular thing. Mm-hmm. I don't have to create the original, but I want right. to be able to do the things. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Oh my gosh, this has been such a good conversation. And I Mm -hmm. hope it inspires you guys out there to, if you are in the spot where you're starting to like dial into the why of your business and your bigger goals and and bigger picture of why you're doing this. Awesome. Also, for those of you that are just starting your business, realizing that you don't have to be here yet, that getting to this point where Mark figured out like, oh my gosh, I need this whole big rebrand takes time. I mean, you, there's no way you could have gotten here even three years ago. It just, it mm-mm, wasn't, mm-mm. It, it, it just needs still, to happen in its own time. Yeah. I was still trying out all the different things, try, figuring out, do I want, is this the kind of thing I want to do in my business? Are these the clients I want to work with? Um, mm-hmm. Is this the kind of work I want to be creating? It was all of that. Like you have to, you have to try those things out. And then when you get to the point where you figure out, okay, I don't like this thing, but I love this thing. And uh-huh. you work with that for a little bit, then it's time to start thinking, okay, is my messaging, is my brand, is my business name, is all of that, like, is that all of that communicating to the the world that this is the stuff that I do? And I think, and I also like for me moving into my name being sold on creative instead of photography related uh-huh. is that that's opening the door to more things that I want to be doing, um, that are community based, but also like moving into doing more video, um, right. and then just poss- letting the universe guide me and like, what else can I do with this? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. so it's, it's, I think there are definitely things people can take from this conversation if they're at the beginning stages that they can take and say, okay, I need to keep that in mind for mm-hmm. what to be, what to be discovering along the way as I'm building my business. Mm-hmm. And you can start now. You can start from the beginning. You can start diving deep into into things, and that may change as time goes on. But just being aware of it is the first step. Um, yeah, being aware yep. of the fact that you're gonna grow, you're gonna uh, discover different things. Because that's the other thing is things will happen in your life that you have to that will shift your your path. It'll move you, and yeah. um, and there's purpose. There can be purpose behind it if you allow it. Yeah, for sure. And that whole finding your purpose, I mean, truly, it's just continuing to follow the path of what lights you up. And, Mm -hmm. and to figure out if it does light you up or not. I mean, truly, at least for me, it's just like, get quiet for a few minutes. And you can tell, you know, when you're like, oh, I'm trying to fit the square peg into a round hole, or versus like, I can't freaking believe that this is going on right now because it is so flipping awesome. <laughs> you know, like mm-hmm. there's, there's certainly a different energy in your body that if you just get quiet and just ask yourself, is this the right path? 
Mm-hmm. You know, if there's that little voice back there saying like, mm, not the one, yeah. which I guess you have to not get confused with the little voice behind your head of the conscious mind being like, oh, you might mess it up. You probably don't want to do it. <laughs> like the one keeping you safe versus the one, the yeah. inner knowing one that's like, no, that's not your path. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. All right. Well, Marika, where can, well, what, what is, are you still dirty dog, uh, Instagram right now or are you, did you move over? Yeah. I moved over to soul dog creative. Okay. And uh, I'm still dirty dog photography.com and that will still be live, but read. Directing, and all. Yeah, this yeah. Is why I, but this is why I hired someone to do the things because I don't want because right. there's a lot there's a lot of stuff that has to be <laughs> like I basically said when I when I first reached out I was like okay I want I am doing this thing I'm rebranding I but I don't want to lose my SEO juice like I don't right. all of the hard work that I've done over the past five years uh-huh. I don't want to lose that so help please <laughs> right 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 but, yeah. yeah so if you go to dirtydogphotography.com it will direct you um, in, in June, it will go to yeah. souldogcreative.com. Nice. So, nice. Yeah. Alex yeah. is a, a genius for that stuff. If you guys haven't heard Alex, we actually had on the podcast, he's websites and SEO, and he is fantastic. And he was episode number 100 and oh, no, nope, nope. That's a different Alex. That's Alex Kearns from Australia. She's 110. That's a great conversation too. <laughs> but Alex Vita SEO mistakes most photographers make is episode number 59. So go check them out. Oh, Marika, as <laughs> always, I love chatting with you. I can Me chat too. with you all day long about all of the things. Thanks for taking the yep. time to share your experience with us and um, inspire others along their uh, their purpose journey. Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. (laughs) We'll see you guys next week. Thanks for listening to the Hair of the Dog podcast. This was episode number 143. If you want to check out the show notes for access to any of the resources that we mentioned, simply go to www.hairofthedogacademy.com slash 143. Thanks for listening to this episode of Hair of the Dog podcast. If you enjoyed this show, please take a minute to leave a review. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss our upcoming episodes. One last thing. If you are ready to dive into more resources, head over to our website at www.hairofthedogacademy.com. Thanks for being a part of this pet photography community.